Hello, I'm Dr. Tina Payne Bryson. I am the co-author of the books The Whole Brain Child and No Drama Discipline. I do psychotherapy with kids and adolescents. I work with a lot of parents in helping coach them in how they can uh, work with their children's behaviors and emotions in better ways. And I am a school counselor. And then I'm also a mom to three boys myself. I am wanting to talk with you today about some ideas around discipline and around how we can think about discipline in ways that help our children really thrive. So I wrote the books uh, No Drama Discipline and The Whole Brain Child with Dr. Dan Siegel and he and I have been so excited to share with parents some new ways to think about our kids' behavior. Now let's start with the whole point of discipline or what discipline is. For most people, when we say the word discipline, what they think of is punishment or consequences. Now, the problem with that is that punishment doesn't really change behavior. What we want to do when we think about discipline is to go back to the original meaning of the word, which is to teach. Now, when you talk about discipline, we can think about how our whole purpose for discipline is to teach. What we want our kids to get from discipline is to become self-disciplined people, to become kids and grown-ups eventually who know how to make good choices, who know how to think about other people, who know how to understand themselves and manage their emotions when they get really big and all of these things. We want them to become self-disciplined so that they know what to do when we're not there. So that they make good choices because it's the right thing to do, not because someone is watching. And so this shifts what we're doing in the name of discipline. Because if our whole point is to teach, then we have to think about building skills. That our job is, of course, a survive goal in the moment when a child is doing something we don't want them to do to kind of stop what they're doing. That's the survive goal. But we have a long-term goal as well, and that is for them to learn, to build skills that help them be really good people in the world. So how do we do that? Well, one of the things we can think about is to do a little reflection ourselves and to start asking, is how I'm disciplining my child working? Or are we seeing the same things over and over again anyway? Is what I'm doing in the name of discipline feeling good to me and to my child or not? Because we really can be effective disciplinarians and set limits and have high expectations and hold kids accountable for their behavior and have it still be something that we feel good about and that our kids feel good about and that actually enhances our relationships with them as opposed to cutting down the relationship with them and making them want to avoid us. So these are some questions. Is what I'm doing working? Do I feel good about it? And is it really changing my child? If we ask those questions, we might be wanting to do something a little bit differently. Now, one of the most helpful things to think about is about timing when it comes to discipline. Most of us think about discipline that the minute the child does something, we have to address the behavior right then and there. But the truth is that a lot of misbehavior happens because kids have lost control. When kids have lost control, they typically are not in a state of mind to actually learn. Now, Dan and I in No Drama Discipline talk about how the brain is either in a receptive state, ready and able to learn and listen, or it's in a reactive state where we are not capable of listening and learning. If we are disciplining our children when they are in a reactive state, and we remember that our whole goal is to teach, we'll see that that is not helpful. It's counterproductive. What we want instead is to ask the question, is my child ready to learn? And am I ready to teach? If our child is not ready to learn or we're so angry and reactive that we're not ready to actually teach in a, in a way that's respectful and effective, then it's not the right time to discipline. 
we can wait. And even very young children, two and three year olds, later we can come back. If, if they're really reactive and really upset, they're not going to be able to learn. Our job in that moment is to help calm them down and soothe them so their brain becomes more receptive. And then we can say, let's talk about what happened earlier. Um, even two and three year olds can wait several hours. We can even say, we need to talk about what happened earlier when you got so mad and you hurt brother. Um, let's tell the story about that. And then we have this conversation with them that's all about helping them understand their experience and their feelings and how those led to the behaviors. Now, our job is also to t let them know that those behaviors are not acceptable and to set those limits. But we can absolutely be empathetic about feelings like you got so mad, that was so frustrating to you, and we don't hit. Hitting hurts. That is not okay. And so just there, at the end of that conversation, if we go back to our idea that discipline is teaching, we can ask the question, have I taught the lesson? Has the child been talked to about this in a way that has gotten through to them? And even when they're really, really little, we can tell stories. Um, and what I would say if they're really little is, let's say they've hit um, their sibling, I might say, you are so frustrated. I would get, talk about the feelings with lots of empathy. You're feeling really frustrated. And then I would address the behavior. Hitting hurts. No hitting. Be gentle. And then I might say, I think I hear a bird outside. Let's go outside. And I would distract, not in a way where I'm distracting them from their feelings, but what I'm trying to do is help them move on to something else so I'm not giving a lot of attention to the misbehavior. As they get older, we can then add in another part besides addressing the feelings, addressing the behavior, and moving on. We can also add in what could you do when you're feeling angry and really focus on that skill building part. In the early years, we're just trying to teach kind of inhibiting an impulse. But as they get older, we really want to build some skills and do those kinds of things. So timing is everything. And thinking about, is my child reactive versus receptive? I need to wait till they're receptive before I actually do the discipline lesson. Um, sometimes it might require a lot of um, soothing and empathy to get them there. And then the next part of what I just was talking about there is the idea of asking at the end of this conversation we have with them where we've talked about what they would do differently, um, or we give them a strategy like when you get really angry, you can jump up and down and let some of those angry energy out. After that, we can ask ourselves, have I taught the lesson? And if the answer is yes, I have addressed the behavior, yes, I've taught them, then that may be all we need to do. When we use punishment and we say, you're bad, you here's your punishment, um, or we give a consequence and we are punitive with them, I believe, and we write about this, Dan and I write about this in No Drama Discipline, is that it tends to be counterproductive and harmful in this way. I don't mean harmful in that it's the worst thing we can do, but it's, it's not helpful. It makes the discipline goal less likely to be reached. That's what I mean. It's counterproductive because what happens is that when a child, by the time a child is about five years old, they already know right from wrong. They already pretty much know what's okay and what's not okay, but they don't often do what's right because they can't control an impulse or their feeling gets so big they don't manage it. There's all kinds of reasons. Um, but also, um, they know what's right. And so when we, um, when we use punishment and we say, you know, you, um, you have to go to your room and um, no one's going to talk to you for a while and I'm taking away your toys. Uh, when we do those kinds of things, our child's attention goes away from their own feelings of guilt. So when a child know, has done something wrong, they know they've done something wrong, and we give them the space to experience that where we say, when you said those words to me earlier, that really hurt my feelings. That was really hurtful. And then we're quiet the child will do this oftentimes because they're starting to feel uncomfortable because they feel badly and they feel a little bit of that healthy guilt that is kind of their internal conscience. And that changes behavior. That's a very effective disciplinarian that we want to use because it's a natural process. If we are punitive 
and we take things away and we isolate them and we, um, you know, give them, we really overreact emotionally as well. What happens is all of their attention moves away from us. I mean, away from that internal feeling and their own reflection, and all of that attention goes to us and how mean we are to do this to them. And so they feel often justified in what they did. So this is why I really believe that punishment is counterproductive. If we go back to the idea that the whole point of discipline is to teach, then my job is to be a teacher and a skill builder. Punishment does not build skills. It does not help them have any better capacity to do something different next time. What it does do is teach them how to not get caught as well. It teach them to be, teaches them to be more deceptive and sneakier. What we want to do is tell our kids, I love you no matter what. At your absolute worst, I'm right here with you. This is one of the reasons I'm not really a big fan of timeouts. Most parents don't use them in the way that they were originally designed. Most parents use them as a punishment. Most parents use them as a, you go sit in the naughty chair, or you go to your room, and no one's going to talk to you for a little while. And when we do that, um, usually when we give that as a consequence, it's because our child is falling apart, and they're not handling themselves well. I really believe that that's when our children need us the most. When they're physically in distress, when they're physically hurting, we know our job is to go and comfort them and soothe them and help them feel safe. It's the same thing with emotional distress. When their behavior, when they're falling apart and they're being disrespectful with their words or they're physically aggressive, these are all signs to us that emotionally they are hurting, that they are in distress. And that may be when they most need us. And we can show them during this time, at your absolute worst, I'm right here for you and with you. Now, that does not excuse the behavior because we're going to address the behavior and we're going to ask them to make it right. Okay, so here's what this looks like. The child, um, let's say, um, has hit his brother. And so we would go to him and say, um, oh, you're so angry. I know you know it's not okay to hit your brother, so you must be feeling so angry. Are you okay? And we might even hold them and say, oh, that was, and he'll tell you, well, he did this to me, and I'm so mad. And we say, I know, that, was, that must have been so frustrating. And we empathize with what their experience is, and guess what? That empathy softens them and moves them back into a receptive state. And then we say, Tell me what was going on for you, because I know you know that's not okay. Um, what was going on for you? And then they start going, oh, yeah, well, when I got really mad, and I didn't like that, and I noticed that I started getting like this, and, and then I just couldn't take it anymore, and that's when I hit him. So they're starting to connect up what leads to a moment where they don't handle themselves well. Even little ones we can do this with. And then we can say, you know, that really hurt your brother. And then we're quiet. We wait for them to sit with that information, to feel the impact of that, and then to say, what do you need to do to make it right? What do you need to, and what do you need to do differently next time? At the end of that conversation, again, in a moment when they're receptive and you're not reactive yourself, they then have some skill building that has taken place. We've done our teaching. We don't need to add punishment to that because punishment will make them not want to be in a relationship with us. When someone, think about you as an adult, when someone is punitive with you, how do you feel about them? When someone is punitive with you, do you want to connect with them and share things with them? Do you trust them with your vulnerable, fragile states? No. Punishment erodes our relationships with our children. It's the opposite of teaching because it makes it so our children don't want to learn from us. So think about your timing. Think about your job as a teacher and a skill builder. Change your expectations because the way the brain works, we have to learn things over and over and over and over again until we really have them. So that thing that parents say, how many times do I have to tell you? Well, from a brain point of view, we have to tell you a lot. It, you didn't learn your multiplication tables on a one-time or two-time study. It takes a lot of experiences. But if we continue to 
really focus on our relationship with our child while still having firm limits and boundaries and high expectations, but still being really empathetic and listening to our children's feelings and letting them know we're on their side and comforting them and soothing them even when they are acting badly because that's probably when they need us most. The other thing I would say is that if your child continues to have an issue around a particular behavior, your child is telling you something. Behavior is communication. Your child is telling you, this is what I need skill building in, right? Your child's behavior is not typically something they do just to make you mad or to make your life hard. Sometimes it feels like that, doesn't it? But actually, your child's behavior is actually the list of the things that they need help with, the things they still need to learn, the things that they still need skill building on. And so their behaviors are, in a way, a gift or an opportunity to you to say, oh, my child is showing me that he needs some help building some skills for how to manage his anger when his brother does something to him he doesn't like. He's showing me that he needs some strategies or some ways to better manage his emotions. Now, what can I do to help him with that? And so that becomes our whole focus. So what I would encourage you to do is to be curious. One of the most important things you can bring besides calm and teaching to the discipline process is curiosity. Be curious about your child's behavior. Swim through just the thing your child did or said and ask, why did my child act this way? Why did my child do that? Hmm, I'm so curious about that. And if you bring curiosity instead of judgment and assumptions, you might get to the root of why your child is acting that way, which then might help you be a better problem solver. As much as we can, bring children into the process of problem solving. We can say, I've noticed that it's really hard for you to sit at the dinner table with the family. You're getting up a lot. You're kind of getting in other people's spaces. Have you noticed that too? It seems like that's really challenging for you. Is that, is that your experience? And then the child talks, yes, but I just really don't like my chair. Or dinner takes too long. Or whatever their, their experience is. And then you say, hmm, well, I really want you to be part of family dinner. And I want it to be a really fun experience for all of us. But we've been having a lot of fighting during dinner. So I'd like for it to be a good experience. And you're saying that it's too hard to sit that long. What could we do? Do you have any ideas? Let's come up with a solution to try. And then come up with two or three ideas and say, let's try that for a day or two and see how that works. And if it doesn't work, we'll come up with some other solutions. But you become a co-problem solver with your child. And your whole approach is about helping them build skills. That might mean getting rid of punishment. Parents are often afraid to get rid of punishment because they're afraid it'll mean their kids think they can get away with everything and they will become bad children. But that's not what happens because you're building skills by still having conversations with them about it, by still helping them become problem solvers. So that will serve them with those skills the rest of their lives, even when there's no parent there to punish them. So I want to encourage you to start shifting your lens to think about behavior as communication, about what skills need to be placed, that your child's distressed acting out behavior may be when they need you the most, and that your job is to be a teacher and to build skills. And that might mean waiting and not addressing it in the moment when either you or your child is reactive. I hope these are helpful to you. I hope you will come and find me. My website is Tina Bryson, T-I-N-A, B-R-Y-S-O-N, tinabryson.com. I have all kinds of articles on that website. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. There are links to those off of that page. And I'm always posting, like this week, I'm posting, um, or this month, I'm posting 20 discipline mistakes that even good parents make that comes right from the No Drama Discipline book that Dan Siegel and I wrote. Um, at the end of the No Drama Discipline book, there's also... Um, a refrigerator sheet that has the main points. We actually have that in our book, The Whole Running Child, as well, so that you can just remind yourself of the main points. 
We also have um, a letter to your child's other caregivers, so your um, co-parent or grandparents or teachers that can kind of um, summarize the approach that, um, that we're working from. I hope that you will take advantage of these resources. Um, and of course, please check out um, No Drama Discipline book and the Whole Brain Child book as well. And both books are translated in many, many languages. So hopefully you'll find one that will work for you. Um, enjoy the symposium. Thank you so much for including me in this. And um, I hope that this will be helpful to you. Take care.